The script was scheduled to be read by the victim, but due to le pending legal investigations, he had to opt out. I was supplied this information about his case, and I discovered that several of the same court officials are involved in his case as mine, appearing to trade judicial favors over county lines. I am hoping that I can tie his in with my supporting documentation for my story. My friend would like to connect with all the victims who don't have a voice or the means to correct injustices that have occurred in their lives. It's traumatic enough to be victimized by another citizen. It's far worse when those in a position of power, trust, and authority abuse their power to brutalize those who cannot defend themselves. I never thought a tragedy as such would come into play or was even aware of it that was existing in public. I've been dealing with a judge named Judge Nancy C. Francis, but now she goes by Judge Nancy Wheeler, her maiden name. She has openly and on the record stated as far as having transcripts pulled out, evidence pulled out, and destroyed. I repeat, destroyed. Evidence destroyed. It all came about in 2006 when I filed for divorce for the best interest of my children and also for myself. Things trickled down more and more and more as the process went on. I became more aware as far as, we'll say, the biasness towards the judge. I didn't believe it until certain things weren't being allowed on the record, but openly lies were taken as being true, factual documents were being refused to be admitted as far as evidence. That's in 210, I wrote a letter to the Supreme Court, three letters to the Michigan Supreme Court, and I demand that they put a, record every session, especially with pro se litigants, make sure I had recorded and hearing tape, because we know court reporters are altering the tape and the transcript, so they need a tape in every court in America that is recorded, what is being presented. And then that will set some light on the injustice in the court. Welcome to Rico Busters. Today's show spotlights the second in a series of investigative segments focusing on the Detroit metropolitan area known as Wayne County. Last segment, our investigative journalism brought forth an overview of what corruption might look like in the widespread Detroit metropolitan community. According to Letitia Edgar, Multiple corporations, including Bank of America and their agents and attorneys, including the Trot and Trot law firm, named after the now aspiring politician David Trot, have been collectively involved in the Edgar family's purported victimization, as were the local district, state, and federal courts. At stake was the Edgar home and future stability of the new Edgar family, born with a new child, and for which Mrs. Edgar's husband was jailed after doing procedurally all of the right things, being what any number of us would be doing under similar circumstances. Though he fought for the security of his family, his home, his right to due process, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness, Mr. Edgar nevertheless had it all taken away by these racketeers disguised as lawyers, corporations, and government. Find out what's behind all this. Keep watching as we expose the second tier of this special investigative series involving Bank of America and Trot and Trot. Right after a word from our sponsor and Liberty News Highlights. What does liberty mean to you? The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Does it mean being able to vote as a Democrat or a Republican? The National Liberty Alliance emphasizes the exercise of your individual rights under common law. Check it out. NationalLibertyAlliance.org Much turmoil has been documented as associated with the countrywide bankruptcy debacle. Remember Countrywide's corrupt underwriting and appraisal process? Subsequently, Countrywide was bought out by Bank of America, which continued the fraudulence under the guise of mortgage refinancing schemes and foreclosure fraud. The Edgars appear to be just another American family to fall victim to Bank of America and other mortgage lenders employing law firms such as Trot & Trot, to initiate foreclosure proceedings while instituting graduated payment loans and other schemes to defraud individuals and families out of their rightful ownership of homes and other property. The problem began for the Edgars when they attempted to negotiate with their mortgage lender for a payment plan to lower the escalating monthly amounts under the initial purchasing agreement. In this segment, we look at another of the plethora of examples to choose from, 
all reflecting a similar pattern of operation. And with a healthy number of cases involving the very same players being both individuals and corporations, most notably to include the Trot and Trot Law Firm and Bank of America, each conducting themselves in very incriminating manners and collectively presenting a strong appearance of racketeering and corruption by corporate and government power schemes and enterprises, using the Wayne County Sheriff's Department and numerous courts, both state and federal, operating as corporations in Wayne County. He can maybe go in and say that uh, this judge had no right to put me in jail for 30 days for not saying a word without a bond and without knowing why I'm there, nothing of this, and put you in jail for 30 days for asking a simple question of, are you an Article Three judge? Wow. How many days? 93. 93 days. 77, though, right? But until we can make the popular opinion, until we can get the, the, the majority of reasonable people to hear that statement, to hear the facts, and, and, and uh, put this in a big scope where a lot of people are looking at it, it's always going to be subject to the interpretation of the powers that be, and that's going to be the next higher level judge, uh, whoever, the, whether it's a federal court or state court or whatever, they're always going to be re reviewing what the criminals were doing at the lower levels. And as long as it's kept in that track and we don't get light on it, it's going to continue to be interpreted as not in our favor. What is of key significance in presenting this series is that the investigative aspects of our RICO buster journalism is being done by the victims themselves. In effort to hold these corporate and government actors accountable for the fraudulent charades they are perpetuating against innocent individuals and families that are otherwise trying to follow the rules for borrowing and lending. These are the rules that the rule makers, the rule interpreters, and the rule enforcers themselves are repeatedly failing to follow. The evidence is compelling, at least in the view of these urban freedom fighters against corruption and oppression. Individuals such as Letitia Edgar and her husband, Cornell Squires and his associates, and Crystal Price and her family are breaking the mold the stereotype of what urban dwellers are like. These Americans, many being people of color, are rising up, empowering themselves and using extraordinary levels of hard work, intelligence, and resourcefulness to fire back against those in power that are abusing their power as judges and judicial officers, i.e. lawyers, to rape and plunder what is left of the Michigan economy after big government and greedy corporations turned the once thriving Motor City into a blight-ridden devastation area. Crystal's case began in September 2009, brought on by a divorce and a refinancing of the former family home in her name for lower payments. And so you know, I was going, getting ready to go through a divorce, so I was saying, you know, thinking ahead of, of, of myself and saying, you know, let me call them and see if they can help me to, to avoid from going into foreclosure. So on a boat um, and falling behind on my mortgage payments, you know, because I know if um, I have to pay uh, rent somewhere, I might as well pay my mortgage instead of moving out and moving somewhere else. It doesn't, it doesn't make sen sense to do that. Notably, nearly all of the corruption cases whether in mortgage, finance, foreclosures, family courts, probate cases, criminal cases, or otherwise, the government corporations and lawyers are repeatedly scheming together to take advantage of family turmoil and grief. When these families turn to the government and the courts for help in the resolve of personal and family issues. Recent evidence of this fraud upon the public stemmed from the 2008 bailouts of the banks. Notably, 
The bailout of Bank of America, which subsequently engaged in mortgage and foreclosure schemes with the help of third-party firms like Trot and Trot, putting them into the strategic position for collectively robbing homeowners of their sweat equity, their home interest, and ultimately their property. Remember that in 2012, a United States District Court whistleblower case was unsealed and opened to the public to reveal that Bank of America had engaged in fraudulent schemes that prevented homeowners from receiving mortgage loan modifications under a federal program in order to avoid millions of dollars in losses and while benefiting from financial incentives provided by the U.S. government and us taxpayers for B of A participating in the program. The case was filed by whistleblower Gregory Mackler under the False Claims Act on behalf of the people of the United States against Bank of America and their home loan servicing companies. That case resulted in a $1 billion settlement and a $25 billion agreement against Bank of America for defrauding huge numbers of individual homeowners across America, as well as the U.S. government through the Home Affordable Loan Modification Program, referenced as the acronym HAMP. That case began in late 2008 and early 2009 when the United States government provided a total of $45 billion of taxpayer money to Bank of America pursuant to the Troubled Asset Relief Program, referenced as the acronym TARP. It also extended to Bank of America an additional guarantee of over $100 billion. Having concluded that the costs of allowing Bank of America to fail were too high, the government decided that taxpayers would save the life of this bank, and they did, to the detriment of many hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of Americans. HAMP was implemented in March of 2009 to assist the millions of American homeowners facing foreclosure. According to the whistleblower complaint, on April 17, 2009, Bank of America, as the nation's largest mortgage servicer, signed what was called a servicer participation agreement. That agreement was with the U.S. Treasury, which was acting through its agent of Fannie Mae, and requiring Bank of America to use reasonable efforts to effectuate any modification of a mortgage loan under the HAMP. However, Bank of America never entered into the agreement in good faith. Though mindful it needed to permit some number of HAMP modifications to avoid government action against it, Bank of America developed an elaborate scheme to force down the number of successful HAMP modifications. It then did so by deliberately and unlawfully denying scores of otherwise qualified homeowners the ability to successfully qualify for HAMP loan modifications while deceiving homeowners like Crystal Price in Romulus, Michigan. In other words, Bank of America knowingly violated their bailout agreement with the American taxpayers by greedily concluding that it was far more lucrative to deliberately force otherwise qualified homeowners outside of HAMP so that it could profit from foreclosure proceedings, force the homeowners into a more costly proprietary mortgage modification than HAMP would permit, or otherwise profit from continuing to service the defaulting and defaulted mortgages. The 2011 U.S. District Court complaint depicted Bank of America management perpetrating their deceptive racket upon the public through a variety of mechanisms, including developing and maintaining a fraudulently concealed document image repository of homeowner HAMP loan modification documentation, so that Bank of America or its agents could falsely deny receiving homeowner documents or claim incompleteness even after receiving such documents from people like they did with Crystal Price. They also deliberately deceived homeowners like Crystal Price, who complained about Bank of America's handling of their HAMP inquiries and submissions and stepped up their efforts to keep people like Ms. Price from HAMP eligibility. They intentionally forced homeowners like Crystal Price to wait months before providing a response to HAMP eligibility determinations, so it to inevitably result in HAMP ineligibility due to HAMP time guidelines. 
Essentially, Bank of America incorporated numerous schemes that by intentional designs failed to assist homeowners by properly assisting with deadlines, by fraudulently reporting incomplete records and modification status, by wrongfully addressing people's risk of losing their eligible status, and other eligibility concerns, all of which they had implemented against Crystal Price. Meanwhile, as with the case of Crystal Price, Bank of America then also unlawfully proceeded with foreclosure actions under what is called dual tracking protocols, which means pretending to be working on loan modification applications while simultaneously foreclosing on properties during periods in which Bank of America should have otherwise been adhering to agreed procedures for properly reviewing homeowners for HAMP eligibility. This happened to many people like Crystal Price who were making their mortgage payments. By blowing the whistle on these fraudulent practices, Gregory Mackler eventually lost his job. Hundreds of thousands of others lost their homes. Crystal Price, meanwhile, has been fighting for her home for the past four years while documenting criminal fraud and racketeering with those aiding and abetting and covering up the initial crimes committed by Bank of America. Our Rico Buster journalism covers what she found, as Letitia Edgar and her jailed husband had also found, with the business tactics of the Michigan law firm Trot and & Trot, and with numerous state and federal judges operating in Wayne County, Michigan, to aid and abet and cover up for the crimes being perpetuated by Bank of America against the people of the United States, as well as against the taxpayers and the United States government. It appears then that this Mackler whistleblower case settles the answers on numerous questions about what Crystal Price has long been having to endure, such as why, while acting on Bank of America's behalf, the Trot and Trot foreclosure lawyers would draft fraudulent documents referencing wrongful persons' names and wrongful property locations, using fraudulent notary signatures, and while submitting numerous documents to state and federal courts laced with fraudulent gross omissions of fact, such as, how can the so-called sheriff's deputy Felicia Mack be legitimately referenced by a notary public, Yolanda Diaz, as either a he or as a sheriff's deputy? when the county clerk's office has no record whatsoever of Felicia Mack being legitimately registered as a sheriff's deputy in the years 2010 through 2012. With this affidavit submitted by Trot and Trot on July 27, 2011. Here's a document filed by Trot and Trot attorney Matthew Levine dated May 23, 2014, on an appeal by Crystal Price to stop the court from continuing to evict her from her home, fully five years after all this mess got started with Bank of America and Trot and Trot. In this so-called response brief, David Trot's law firm continues to deceptively assert under penalty of perjury as court officers that no fraudulence is prejudicing Crystal Price's fight to keep from becoming homeless and just another of the Bank of America and Freddie Mac's victims. Here, Trot and Trot's attorney Levine refers to another case against Bank of America, L. Bay versus Bank of America, to defy the evidence in the Wayne County record to assert that Felicia Mack is indeed a Wayne County Sheriff's deputy when the Wayne County clerks have clearly asserted that there is no written proof anywhere to be found of such an authoritative appointment to take people's home from them by auction or by any other means. Looking at the L. Bay v. B. of A. case ruling by Terrence Berg, Rico Busters found two huge problems. First, the claim referenced by Trot and Trot's argument against Crystal Price has been relegated to a mere footnote and with no sign in the U.S. District Court ruling that the federal court had actually litigated the claim beyond a preponderance of evidence that Felicia Mack was not a sheriff's deputy. In fact, the written ruling of the so-called Justice Terrence Berg otherwise presents a conclusory statement, an assumption based upon no set of actual facts, and based upon an opposite assumption that can be equally correct in this case. 
The second major problem here is that the presiding judge in this trot and trot reference case is the one and only Terrence Berg, a man I had named in 2008 as guilty of racketeering and corruption. Berg shared the billing on the cover page of my complaint along with numerous others employed by the United States Department of Justice, two employed by the FBI in Michigan, and three Sixth Circuit Court judges in Cincinnati, Ohio, Martha Dougherty, David McKeague, and Gregory Van Tattenhove. This shows that as far back as 2008, I, former school teacher turned court activist and alternative media journalist David Scheid, was accusing all of the federal government actors of covering up state racketeering and demanding a federal special grand jury investigation of government racketeering. Subsequently, after this case was stricken of my evidence and deceptively thrown out by Terrence Berg's soon-to-be judicial peer, Judge Lawrence Zatkoff, Terrence Berg followed his predecessor, former U.S. Attorney Stephen Murphy, through the revolving door of government to slither from the executive branch to the judicial branch. All this just reinforces that which I was saying in 2008 being that our highest levels of state and United States governments are violating the first principles of our Constitution, otherwise guaranteeing that our American rights are upheld through checks and balances upon the three branches, rather than each branch being blended into the other through a tyrannical cooperative and collectivity in government. Getting back to Crystal Price's case and Trot and Trot citing irrelevant case law to support their allegedly fraudulent facts, these attorneys from that law firm are acting on behalf of and or in conjunction with Oakland County politician David Trot as he makes his bid for a House seat in Congress. We'll reveal more of the details of this and other corruption stories in the next investigative segment of Rico Busters.